It's live 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Quick thing, 155. 155 days into the most important election of our lives. And every single day, Donald Trump reminds us of why we have to come out in big numbers to not just defeat Trump, but to defeat Trumpism. You're seeing it now play out in front of us over and over and over. Every day, Donald Trump gives us a reason to stay angry, and that's how we win this election. And the show today, obviously, we're going to talk about what happened over the weekend. It's been heartbreaking to see the pain and agony of so many, yet people like Donald Trump who threatened to unleash vicious dogs on peaceful protesters outside of the White House. Those are not the ones looting. They were outside the White House peaceful, threatened them with ominous weapons, and vicious dogs. And today, Donald Trump encouraged governors to use dominating force on protesters. Donald Trump is doing his best to channel a 1960s white supremacist pro-segregationist sheriff. That's what you're hearing, exact same language. Law and order, vicious dogs, crush protesters. There's a difference between looters and protesters. Now, you might be able to say, well, I watch the media and all I see are these scary looters doing horrible things. Well, you can thank the media for that. The media wants ratings. And here's the reality. I can share this firsthand as a Muslim American in that in the years after 9-11, when there was a bad Muslim who was arrested for something, wall-to-wall coverage, nonstop, was their coverage of the overwhelming rest of Muslims, the 99 point blank percent of American Muslims living their lives, working, contributing to society, being doctors or lawyers or running businesses? No. No. Because those stories don't sell. Those stories don't get ratings. The same way a peaceful protester walking with signs doesn't get ratings. But a looter or someone lighting things on fire gets ratings. And in the midst of this weekend, which was about protesting against police brutality, Donald Trump's answer says he wants to make Antifa a terrorist group. This is unreal. It's unreal what we're saying. And again, it's just another reason for why we must defeat Donald Trump. On the show, I'm going to play a clip too that I find to be a combination of heartbreaking, angering, and instructive. That was Martin Luther King in 1967. Talking about riots are the language of the unheard. Now, of course, he condemned the riots in no uncertain terms. But he talked about what was going on, he said, large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice, equality, and humanity. And he added, riots will happen as long as America postpones justice. So as long as America postpones justice, riots will happen. What's remarkable if you watch this clip of Dr. Martin Luther King, and I'll play it on the show, he gave that speech in 1967. He could have given the exact same speech about police brutality, discrimination, and racism in our society, and white America turning a blind eye to the struggle of African Americans. He could have given that speech from 1967 in 1977, in 1987, in 1997, 2007, 2017, today, because justice has been postponed. And Martin Luther King warned America in 1967, if you postpone justice, you will see more riots. And white America didn't care. Not all, but enough. Enough people in power who, as he said, are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about a justice and equality. Talk about that and more on the show. Obviously, there are updates in George Floyd's case today. The independent autopsy done by the family's chosen doctors and two well-respected doctors found that he was killed by, guess what, a knee on his throat by a police officer. The first autopsy that we heard was, was BS. We all know it. We all watched a man get murdered. Talk about the developments in that case and more. Got two great guests. Midwin Charles are joining us. She's an attorney. You're here all the time on Joy Reid Show. And then activist, millennial activist, Jamira Burley, to give us the, the point of view from, from younger American activists who are out there and what it's like to see yet another African American get killed by the police, but also see protesters now remarkably racially diverse. So many young white people out there with people of color protesting. Does that give someone like Jameer and other millennials hope for the future? Should that give us all hope for the future? So that and more, again, my show is on SiriusXM uh, Sirius channel 127, Progress. Hope you'll tune in. Thanks for tuning in to my preview 
the Dino 